Hello and welcome to the Build a Soil YouTube channel. Today we've got episode six. We're gonna be transplanting all of our seedlings. And we're gonna be transplanting to a, just a slightly larger container size. Main reason is we don't know if they're male or female yet. You're gonna to have to go through this as well when you plant seeds like we suggest. You can buy feminized seeds, but this is an important skill set, and a lot of the best seeds out there are gonna be normal seeds. Of course, there's good, reputable, feminized seed breeders, but I want you to know how to do everything. We do have some feminized autoflowers that we're running, and we're gonna go over that quadrant, show you what they look like. We have transplanted, and I wanna show you where we're at, because today's the first day we're gonna add water down below. Otherwise, this is the main focus, is getting all of these with some new shoes. Today, I've got this 50-pack of basic grow bags. If you've seen these before, that means you've used them. If not, I'll show you what we're gonna do. It's already got the holes in it, and it's kind of flimsy, but the soil will hold itself. Now the downside is, I don't like single-use plastics. The upside is, these aren't really single-use if when you go to transplant, you just pull it off, set it down, and reuse it again. You can reuse them again and again and again. But if you don't treat them very carefully, you can stretch the plastic. So treat them carefully. You can reuse them over and over. But what's really nice is, we've got you know, a few seeds here today to do. I don't want to go buy dozens of hard plastic pots that I have to wash and keep in inventory and make sure that I get the value out of them when I may not use that size again. I usually like one gallons and I have some of those, but this time I'm leaving town. My wife's having a surgery, but we're going to be going to Canacons and on Monday after that event, she goes into one surgery. The first one's just the inspection, pop the hip, do a hip scope, make sure that they've inspected what they expect. And then that next week, week and a half later, she goes under for the major one where they shape bone and do all this stuff. And so then I'm gonna be in Denver with her for I think 16 days because we have to make sure she can't leave. She has to have the follow-up. You can't drive or fly. You can't do the altitude. It's a major surgery. And then when they give her the green light, 15, 16 days after that, I'll be back. Of course, I'm not gonna be in the office as much. I wanna make sure she's taken care of and we'll kind of tackle it as a team. But that means that when I do this now, and I've still got to leave for Canacon, come back, then leave for two and a half weeks, and then come back, they're gonna be in here for the next three to four weeks. Which means that I'll be able to identify the sex, but I won't be here to baby them in the one gallons. What I mean by that is, if you're trying to keep them this phenomenally healthy in this container, it's gonna be near impossible very soon. So today I need to transplant before they get unhealthy. The same thing's gonna happen again pretty quickly in those one gallons. So my goal is to dim the light a little bit. Make sure they're not just raging out of those one gallons. It'll slow them down and keep them really healthy. Next, I have to monitor the watering. Without them being full raging, they may not drink as much and I do not want them to overwater. As long as I get that right, when I leave, it'll be very easy for my staff to help me with the plants. They're great growers. Everyone that works here knows how to deal with plants. So they'll tend to them. I don't want them with their busy schedule to have to deal with one gallons and have to feed them. I'm confident I could grab some Thrive, I could grab some organic gem, anything that's got a lot of protein in it, and I could keep feeding the plants, even in the one gallon, to be happy, but I don't wanna put myself up against a uh, rock in a hard place. So I can grab some two gallon pots, but they're hard and they're big, and then I'd be transplanting big plants into the beds. And that would probably be fine I don't like to dig out lots of soil in the no-till, but I've also got the container we're gonna have in this section, and that is the automatic watering one that we've never used before, and those containers aren't quite as big, so I don't wanna have a huge root ball that I have to drop in here. So that's part of why I'm going this method. The other thing about these that's unique is I don't have to fill it full. So I can fill it with soil, then I can roll the sides down, and I can have it where it's easy for me to work with and manageable by space, and then when I come back and before I leave, if they're still growing too fast and I think that they won't make it two weeks, I can unroll the sides a little bit, top it off with more soil, give those feeder roots more room to grow into and it'll keep them extremely happy. Because if you remember, the new root growth is what picks up the food the easiest. That's why root bound is really hard. So this is a plan that is cost effective. I'll be able to reuse them and it'll give me more space than the one gallons I'm used to. It'll help my staff because they can unroll it and top it off. You can totally do this with mulch and cover crop. You can use one gallons and you can observe them for sex. And as soon as they show, you can start transplanting them. So you don't have to do this, but this is a way to make it easier on myself. Of course, it will cost more soil because I'm gonna have a bigger bag. So the goal is a gallon, gallon and a half of soil in here, plus what's already in the cup. And that'll give me a good visual and there should be plenty of room for the future. 
And honestly, it's gonna be, I think, one of the smoothest liftoffs, even though we're going through a little chaos right now. And that takes that accurate thinking. It takes the pre-thought to make sure I'm not just going as hard as I can and then realize I'm gonna be out of town for too long and it all falls apart. So plan ahead, I think you'll do really well. Let's look at the quadrants. This is quadrant one. The auto flowers are doing great, beautiful color. They really took off as far as their transplant goes. Only thing I'm a little worried about, which we did address early on was, hey, you don't wanna put auto flowers in the cups. I last round in season three, I started the seed right in the earth box. This time I didn't, and partially because I had other seeds to do, and not everyone is comfortable putting a seed right in their soil, especially if it's no-till soil that's raging with life. So this was one method to do. Now, I don't have a lot of experience with the auto flowers, but you can see this little one right here, it's looking beautiful. You can also see this one is looking beautiful, but in between you see crowning of hairs and it looks like it's triggered to flowering. I don't recall from last time how big they were when that started happening. Part of my thought is I might have some smaller auto flowers this time because we transplanted it. We'll just document it. We'll show you what we learn along the way and we'll keep going. But they are healthy. They are happy. A little bit of dirt on them from when I transplanted. All the new growth, obviously beautiful, happy, clean, almost blue and green in color. Then underneath here, there was some mycelium that popped off. There's lots of little predator mites and thing and springtails and all this stuff running around and that's from the build a flower top dress. It's nice and moist in here. I don't see really any water down the tube because I didn't put any. And based on weight and based on the growth, I think it's safe for me to start bottom watering. So at the end of today, I'm gonna grab the hose with the filtered water and I'm gonna put water down all these tubes for the first time. If you're at home and you've got one that small, you might wanna wait a few more days, but I'm gonna be leaving town and for me to bottom water now would make it easier for everybody to take care of these plants. So that's what I'm gonna do. We'll see how it works. Next, we've got quadrant two. You can see the cover crop in here is really popping off beautiful vibrant new growth on all the cover crop clovers filling in over here if i dig in there's worms everywhere the moisture feels really nice i don't see any fungus gnats i'm just happy with this i think it's going to be a great run it ended up filling in completely and it was a little sparse in the beginning so that's pretty cool fungus gnats can be a problem because we like moist soil and they can proliferate but one of the things that i expect is as you get into your third fourth cycle it shouldn't be an issue you might see a couple there's so much life that's more balanced it takes care of itself in a brand new grow some of the populations can explode and then die. And pretty soon, when you have a healthy ecosystem, you don't really have anything that's out of balance. Look at this one. This is just gorgeous in here. It's all the new growth is looking beautiful. You can see mushrooms every day are popping up in here. Here's one that popped up this morning. There's another one starting right below. So that's a new mushroom that'll be up tomorrow. When everything's right in the grow room, you create this little forest, this little ecosystem that really functions well. And I mean, it's grown big, it's really cool. So we will be chopping and dropping. We will be going over re-amending and we'll discuss that as we go. That's pretty cool. Look at that variegation on that one. That wasn't, doesn't look like nutrient to me. It looks like one of those house plants that had the variegation, but it grew out of it. So who knows? Could have just been from the seed. Anyways, part of the fun. We'll get to that soon in some of the coming episodes. Let's get into transplanting these beautiful seeds. Right away, I see a couple big ones up front here that just look gorgeous. All the serration on the leaves and the new growth. Let's see, let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we're getting nine leafers right out of the little cup. I love seeing that. You don't often see nines and elevens when you're growing from clone. Something about the vigor of the seed. You can see the original cotyledons on there, the original single leaves that came out, the first triples, and then after that branches and bigger leaves and it's all connected. Every single bit is healthy all the way to the end because we're working with living soil. We're not guessing what nutrients they need. We're just being a good steward with the environment and letting them use the soil and everybody's happy that way. These are all the fruit by the funk, so covert, killing it. Of course, this big one's probably gonna be a male, but we don't know yet. I just joke with myself. Anyways, we will see. I've got a Sharpie. I'm just gonna go ahead and write directly on the bag. Since I reuse these, oftentimes I just cross it out right next to it. Sometimes I'll start putting tape onto them. You can grab some masking tape, whatever you want. You don't even have to write on here. You can put the little sticks in there. So I'm gonna leave this to the side. I'm going to prepare my water. Then I'm gonna start grabbing the bags, labeling them, and I'll probably do like I normally do. I'll show you one up close and personal, show you exactly what I get, what I do. I'm gonna use the same transplant formula that I used when I did the auto flowers just to keep it consistent in here. Probably gonna add one more ingredient because these plants are ready to rage and I'm using light soil. One of the things about our soils is that they're full of organic matter that the biology will convert to nitrogen, but there's very little available nitrogen when you start. Of course, they look beautiful, but I love giving them that, that protein shake, that protein to start, especially with all the biology. And since I've been really enjoying using this new product, we're gonna use that today in addition to. And we'll talk about it when we get there. 
I already put filtered water in here. I've got about three and a half gallons, it's almost full. I've had some people ask me if they can use RO water. That's kind of a common topic. You could totally use RO water. I just don't encourage people to go buy RO systems because they have waste, they're expensive and slow, and it's not needed for living soil. If you already own one, go ahead and use it. We're gonna add some goodies into it and it should be just fine. I don't think RO is really that bad, but there are reasons to believe that having a water with zero parts per million in it can start to take instead of give. And that's kind of one of the philosophies as far as human health. And so we try and mimic everything. I just use filtered water. I've got the water in there. I'm going to grab the wetting agent first. Any wetting agent you have is fine. You can use soap nuts. Yucca, this is my go-to favorite. It's the Q, Q20. This is the most natural, it's the 20% an eighth to a half teaspoon per gallon. So I'm gonna just put a little bit in here. When I'm wetting, I'm just trying to get the water wet. Like it doesn't have to be the exact measurements and you can use a little bit less and it, it goes a long way. So I'll sprinkle a little bit in. There we go, that's about a teaspoon. Last time what we used was that. We used some RootWise for the transplant. This has the mycorrhizal fungi that'll associate with the roots. It has a whole bunch of beneficials. It has Azos. A lot of you guys will buy Azos and combine it. This already has it in there. You don't need to buy other products. This one already has all the bacilluses that you'll get out of some of those other products they market and say they have everything. It already has the glomulus and some of these other ones like Pseudomonas that are responsible for phosphorus and also producing enzymes. So this is my favorite go-to. Normally I would do like a tablespoon for a five gallon. So for this I could do like a half tablespoon, but they've already received it. And so now I'm just trying to do maintenance doses. I'll put about a teaspoon in there as well. The last part of the formula for a transplant, I really like using aloe. It's a medicinal plant. We've talked about it a million times. I'm gonna sprinkle a small amount. Instructions are one teaspoon per gallon. I'm gonna do about two teaspoons in here. There we go. That is all that I added when I transplanted those. I did sprinkle a little bit of Bovaria bassiana in the hole. That's a beneficial that's been known to help with pests and also symbiotic relationship with the plant. And then I had these ground up insects which bring chitin and they kind of elicit the plant to have a positive stress response so that they put out their defenses, which is, in our case, the trichomes that we want. So I like dealing with that elicitation, dealing with that stress response. Chitin you can get from crustacean meal, but lately people are a little more worried about ocean-based products, using them repeatedly because you get a little heavy metal with it and it could build up over time, where that one you're not gonna have that effect. So I'll leave those for when I, I do the planting hole. I'll do it the same as I did the auto flowers. Again, you don't have to use these things. Some of you own them. I wanna teach you how to use them in the best responsible manner. The last that I did say that I wanted to add was this. And this is one of my favorite new products. In fact, we had one of our customers that was so impressed with the results on their plant and they own a microscope and they have a YouTube channel. They posted up the microscope work of that product because he was like, well, it says probiotic, let's see what's in it and sent it to us. And he was excited about it. It circles back completely for me because when I learned from Gil Carandang to make the lacto formula that a lot of you know is lacto, you start with a rice and you wash the rice, you get the carbohydrate rich water, you pour it into milk. Kind of like when you make sourdough bread, the, the biology that feeds can only eat the flour and that's how you know you have the yeast growing that you want. Well, same in milk, it suffocates most except for the ones that feed on it and that's the lactobacillus. So they call it lactoserum. Early on when I made my first video, people were coming on there like, how do you know you're getting lacto? You're gonna kill yourself, this is disgusting. Now, fast forward 10 years, people on Instagram are drinking it, eating the cheese from it, like fully trusting it. This is a significantly more probiotic version because it's based on kefir and the kefir is duplicatably the same. It's better for making a product. And so I'm excited. I'll show you what it looks like. I shake it, it says to shake. I think that my last video and I didn't. So this will actually have a lot more of the functional parts of the lacto in there. And this one, if I read on here, I believe it's an ounce, one to four ounces per gallon. Like if you've got a full size plant raging and you wanna do one application, you can. I'm gonna use it a little more often. I'm gonna do about an ounce per gallon. I've got a measuring glass, let's just do it. So there's, so see the color how it's a little more milky this time. When I poured it, it was clear the first times because I hadn't shaken it. And when you leave this material, um, it starts to grow in the bottle, a pellicle on top. And if you look that up, it's like this beautiful layer. You can actually see what it looks like here in that photo. And that's to basically block the liquid underneath from any oxygen because it's an anaerobic species. And so when, when you shake it up, it gets all the goodies that it made mixed in the liquid. And that's part of the proteins, vitamins, foods that you actually want in there. So there's one ounce. And I could go harder because these, are, these plants are raging, but I think I've already got the root wise. They're gonna have brand new soil. I'm just gonna do an ounce per gallon and, that, and they're just gonna hook up and take off. So there's the three ounces. In fact, I got three and a half gallons. Let's do three and a half, one ounce per gallon. 
it's pretty neat to know that it's so alive in that bottle. And you can make yourself, you can make kefir at home and make the whey. If you don't wanna buy the grains, find the grass-fed, you know, non-homogenized raw milk and make the kefir, then you can just buy it from him. It's a big part of our process is do it yourself, get it from us, doesn't matter, you're supporting a community either way. The guy's name that took the video was Shooting the Soil. And he's on Instagram, that's also his name on YouTube. So if you see it in here, you can always check out his YouTube channel. He does microscope work on other products besides just this. I think it's stuff that he finds and he uses in his garden and he's, he's fascinated by it, so he uploads the video. Well, it's pretty cool. If you don't own a microscope, it's gonna be hard for you to look into what it looks like, so check out his video, ask some questions. Guy's a great guy, a good customer. Thank you for sending it. It got us all excited, so I appreciate that. I've got my water ready. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in so I can shake it. If I really want that wedding agent, I want the root wise, I want the Yahweh, I want all that to get mixed around in there. Okay, I could spray because this soil is, is not very wet in here, but I'm just gonna do it in the container and I'll deal with it as we go. The wetting agent will really help that. It's up to you if you want to, if you've got more time, you could water this, get it perfect, come back the next day, make sure it's nice and then do all your transplanting, but I think this will work great. Let's do the Soleil Levant. I'm not gonna number them because I'm gonna pull some of these out as males. And so none of, some of the numbers won't exist once I'm selecting the clones from the females. So I'm just gonna do this. Soleil, Levant. That's it. You don't have to write the whole thing out unless you really want to. I'm not gonna forget what they are. Also, I just did what I didn't want to do. I'm gonna be rolling these down. So that'll probably go away. So let me just do this. Soleil, Levant. <laughs> I'm gonna label them all in the middle so I can roll it down. I forgot I'm not using the whole bag this time. Then I'm gonna come over here. You can use a scooper, a shovel, whatever you've got. I just kind of use my hand like this and I start to fill it. It starts to take shape. Then you can use two hands. I just set this, this in here because it would hold the soil. If you're wondering why that's here, it was to me it's easier than digging inside this little bag to show you. I can set it here and scoop from around it. Now I'm not trying to go full. So if you can see, it's to right here right now. So I'm gonna carve out a spot in the middle. In fact, I'll take a little out because I don't want this to be sitting too proud, sitting too tall out of the soil in the middle. Now in the planting hole, I'm going to do just like I did before. I'm going to sprinkle a little Bovaria bassiana right around the planting hole so that it touches all where the roots are going to touch. And I'm barely putting any in there, just enough to touch the roots as the biology will come into contact and grow with the roots. And then I'm going to sprinkle one half scoop of the OptiVeg or just not full. Sprinkle it in there. That's it. That's gonna soup up the light with the chitin and you know the, the protein that's in here. Plus we're adding some from the Yahweh. They're gonna have more than enough. They're just gonna rage. Let's grab the very first one. God, it looks beautiful. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I see two tips on there about to be eight and nine, probably right there on this next one. So getting nines across the board is pretty cool. As always, I like to open one of my fingers, put it in there so that I'm supporting the soil as it pops out pop it out, you can see the roots. They looked a little more impressive last time as they've been in here quite a while. And so you can see some of the old roots, some of the new roots that have developed. I'm just gonna leave the mulch on, not really a concern for me. I'm just gonna drop it right there. And you can see that it's a little hard to pour the soil in now. So I just hold the leaves to the side and I just come in here and I fill it in with soil. Once it's full up to the top, I'm gonna tamp it down with my hands and then I'll leave it partially full like that so that I can leave town and have more room on top for later. Okay, I'm gonna roll the sides down so you can kind of see what we're working with here. See that we're gonna have some more room in the future. So I may, a couple things to consider. I can go in here and start to pull some of these leaves off since they're gonna be like in the bag, but I honestly don't wanna spend the time to do it. And I think it's gonna shoot up with size and it's not gonna matter, so I'm gonna leave it. That's just something you can do. You can always clean up the lowers so they're not sitting there touching the soil. Sometimes when they're in the soil, you can get a lot of bacterial growth on the leaf. If you start to see that, just pluck the leaf off. It's not really a problem. I wanna gently water right now, so I'm gonna put the one gallon nozzle on. That'll also help evenly distribute the moisture so that it doesn't just run straight out the bottom. So what I like to do is just go around completely Make sure I just kind of fill it with some foamy water and then I just back off and I let it settle in. And right here you'll see when water starts to come out, see how that one was kind of fast? If I had watered for longer, a lot more would dump out. Even with the wetting agent, it'll find some pockets on the sides and start to go. But that's about all that'll come out. I'm just gonna wait for a while while this wicks in. Then I'll be able to come back and add more moisture without it dumping so easily. So that's it. 
That's all I'm gonna do, and then I'm just gonna leave these full on the table, do them all, I'll make sure they're labeled. I'll be able to come back, and then we're gonna show you, as they get bigger, right in the area where they're gonna show you their presex, and they're gonna show you whether they're male or female. Once we see that, we're not gonna change the lights. It just happens naturally about six weeks in. And so we're gonna show you how to identify, go over that whole process again, blow up the photos, you can tell the males versus the females. We'll go over how many we have, then we'll make our selection, if we have extra, of our best females to go ahead and transplant into each one of these setups, which means I get to build this auto setup. Those are gonna be flowering already. These get to get re-amended. We're going over all of it. So keep watching, subscribe, tell your friends. Pretty excited about this season four. Um, I'll come back and I'll do the rest of this later. Let me just grab another bag. And now I think we're probably just gonna set the camera down. I'm gonna go through, in fact, let me look at this big one. I wanna see what these roots like, look like real quick. So that one is the fruit by the funk. You can see some of the older roots, some of the newer roots, some of the new roots that are coming out all the time. So it's not root bound yet, but it's been there a little too long. And so it's really gonna be good to get it out of here, get it some new shoes. Look at all that fuzz on there from some of the microbial action interacting with the roots. Really pretty cool to see. Be fun to put a microscope on that. All right, I'm gonna put this back in because I don't wanna mix up which ones I'm working on. I'll leave that right there. Let's do the next Soleil Levant. And then I'm just gonna get all these done right now. Got a lot of work to do, so I'm just gonna be quiet and get it done. All right, well, I hope you watched along, but I had a lot of work to do, sweating, it wasn't hard, it was just repetitive. And if you have more space than I do, you can line up a whole bunch of containers, fill them all up at once, put all your plants in and stage it out. But either way, it just has to get done. So if you've got thousands to do, I'm sure you're gonna come up with a process. If you've got dozens to do, it's not that big of a deal. We've got the Soleil Levant's like, look at this one's already hooking up, praying already, because it was one of the earlier ones. I love seeing that, that's a good sign. All the way down, these are the most recent ones done. This one got a little dirty, so I kind of sprayed it off. I'll probably foliar spray them all. I'm going to go through, because we see some runoff, the way these plastic bags work, the holes are kind of up high, and if any of the water hits the side, it just drains out instead of going in. The wetting agent helps, but it's not perfect. So what I'm gonna do is lift it and go, ooh, that is an ideal weight. That's probably why that one's so happy. This one, that's a good weight. They all feel pretty good. I'm looking for anything that's light. None of them should be too heavy. And if there's any that are light, I'll make sure I water, but they all feel pretty good. I'm gonna give it a once over, and I know I'm gonna do that because I'm gonna move them. When I turn the camera off, it's, this is the aftermath. I've got a mess in here. I got dirt everywhere, water's still dripping. I'm gonna let the water just stop dripping. I'm gonna let them be happy without moving them. Then I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna probably set them all on top of this bed or on the floor, wipe the table down, evenly separate them out so they look beautiful, take the stuff off the end of the table that's taking some of my space, reorient the humidifier, pull my chapin sprayer out, and right now I'm gonna water down here. Then when I'm done, it'll be ideal for whoever has to take care of these while I'm gone. I'm gonna go to Canacon, take care of my wife, come back, these should be really happy. What's great is there's no work for the cover crop. Nobody has to watch it. The earth boxes are fully automatic, so if you've got a busy lifestyle and you wanna grow organic, literally a bag of soil, craft blend, build a flower, water down the tube, it's all you have to know how to do. It's automatic, I love it. So because it's automatic, it'll be easy for us when we leave. They'll just have to put water down the tube, that's it. Because I want to kickstart it and I told you I'd do that, I'm going to grab the hose, put some water down. This is attached to a filter and I'm just going to water right like that. And I'll put it right on here so I don't blast it anywhere. I go slow to start. Once I know it's hitting water, then I kind of ramp it up to full speed. Mainly because I don't want to disturb those pockets of soil that we packed in there as the wicking area. And then what I'm going to do is I'm looking here in the middle for the runoff. So once it dumps out the bottom, that means it's completely full. And you'll want to watch it because it kind of comes on quick. So one of the reasons why I didn't water right away is I like to transplant and I like to see new growth happening before I water down the bottom. You see the roots, the first thing they do when they get in new soil, they immediately go to all sides. Roots go wall to wall. If I bottom water and fill this full of water, it gets like mud underneath and there's no roots in it yet. As Soon as the roots touch, they're going to drink the water and the whole process kind of closes the loop, it starts this flywheel, start pumping, adding water, it drinks it, add water, it drinks it. But because we have living soil, if we had water right away and they're not growing yet, you can get anaerobic, it'll smell down the tube and rotten and your plants could die. It's the only caveat with the earth box. So this one I'm probably shooting a little prematurely, that smallest one, 
but I'm confident it's hooked up and it's gonna run, so I'm just gonna water. You can just use tap water. It, there's so much probiotics in here, it really eliminates any of the issues of the water, especially if you have pretty clean tap water. But I do like filtering it if I can. I wanna move all of these plants so that they're arranged and they're easy to water and they're easy to keep track of, but water is kind of still dripping. I'm just gonna let it hang out, like I said, come back and tend to it when I know everything is nice and ready for it. Some of them are already starting to perk up in their new home. That's it, that's what I wanted to cover today. Mainly, I just wanted to talk to you about planting your own grow. You can transplant right out of those cups, right into your bed. You did not have to do this step. But if I go ahead and line all my plants up in a row there, and I end up pulling three in a row that are males, I might have half my bed not where I want the plants. So this allows me to put them exactly where I'd like. If you have clones, you don't have to do this. If you have feminized, you don't have to do this. This is a big part of the process. And I can keep the males, I can collect the pollen, we can make more seeds. We promise to go over that in the future. Obviously, I'm leaving, coming back, leaving. But in between all of that, when I land, we're gonna flip our males into flower, show you how to collect pollen. And then when these are flowering, show you how to label a branch and apply the pollen directly to the branch. We'll talk about pollen storage, all of those things, so that we can learn together and maybe share some seeds in the future. Beyond that, we will be doing the reamending of the bed. So if you've been looking forward to that, that episode's coming up soon. Otherwise, I'm just happy to make it this far where we pop seeds, they look perfect, they look beautiful, everything that I'm hoping to teach you so you can experience the same results at home. And I think we're doing a good job this season. So that's where we're at. I'm going to leave it here, walk out of here, and then I'll come back and clean it all up as this water stops dripping, spread them out like I said, and we'll take some photos and upload them and you'll see in the next video. We're probably gonna do a time lapse, but this whole thing is gonna be an even canopy of just growth really quickly with this much soil. So looking forward to that. Looking forward to the next episodes. Also looking forward to your questions that you put in here. We did an FAQ, we just dropped it recently. We're gonna keep doing those from the questions that we get in this season. So if you do have a question, put it in there. If you just cannot wait to get your question answered, you can always check out our Patreon. A lot of the members have decided, hey, we wanna contribute a few bucks, really throw at this YouTube thing. And because there's less people there, they're interacting, getting questions answered that they'd created a Discord group for Build-A-Soil because everybody wanted a place to hang out and we're doing some behind the scenes stuff there. So if that's something you're into, you can check that out on Patreon. Otherwise, this stuff's always gonna be free. We just wanna teach you. We hope that if your friends are learning and they're gonna bug you to death about how you get such good results, just turn them onto our YouTube. Show them the channel, let them learn on their own and maybe they'll have some good questions to ask as they start to learn. That's it, each one teach one. Get some more plants, get some more soil, plant more seeds, build more soil. And until next time, I'll see you guys on the next episode.